When you learn a programming language, the things you need to learn basically fall into five categories. The syntax and semantics of a language define the rules of the language itself. Syntactical rules concern the arrangement of the code text, whereas semantic rules concern the meaning behind that text. A library in programming is just a body of pre-existing code. In practice, when we program, we don't want to have to start from scratch so we invoke functions in libraries to provide common functionality. For instance, most programs do something with files, and it would be silly if we had to write all of the code ourselves to open and write to files, so instead we use a library. We should just have to invoke the appropriate pre-existing functions. In most languages, there is what is called the standard library, or the core library and this just refers to a set of libraries that are always presumed to be available in that language. So for example, when you program in the C language, you expect not just to have a compiler for C code, you expect to have the set of code that comes standard with the C compiler. Aside from the standard library, it's very common to make use of other libraries, and these libraries may be something which you have to pay for, but in many cases they're things which are freely available. So, for example, again, when programming in C, the C standard library doesn't include anything that will help you create a graphical user interface for your program, but there are a number of free libraries in C which you can use for this purpose. They're just not considered a standard part of the language. Just like in human languages, we have idioms in programming languages. Given the syntax, semantics, and commonly used libraries of a language, there then develops a set of common small patterns that are used to perform common tasks. They are basically informal conventions, so they can't really be formally taught. In practice, you'll just pick them up as you go along. Finally, in any language you have to deal with tools. At the very minimum, you have in a language either a compiler or an interpreter or some mix of the two. And like most things in programming, they tend to have their own complications once you get into the details. Another tool to learn is a text editor, and while the basic text editors, such as Notepad that comes standard on Windows, are very, very simple, some programmers prefer some very complicated text editors, namely there's one called Emacs and another called VI, both of which have very steep learning curves. A debugger is a program which allows you to execute your code in such a way that you can step through the code one by one as it executes, and you can see what's going on in the machine as it runs. So for instance, you might be having some problem in your pigeon code where you wish you could see what's happening to a global variable as the program runs. Well, with a debugger you can do that. A profiler is a program which allows you to profile the performance of your code. That is, it can analyze your code as it runs to determine which parts of code are taking up how much time of execution and how much memory they're taking up as well. So you can use a profiler to try and identify bottlenecks in your program, places which are running slowly or consuming too much memory and therefore need to be optimized. A version control system is software which helps you and the people you're working with manage all of the files of code as you create them and as you modify them. The basic idea is that you can take a snapshot of your code as it currently exists and store it in what's called a repository such that at any future point, if you want to go back to an old version, you can go into the repository and retrieve it. These systems also help when you're working on one part of the program and someone else is working on the other, and your changes need to be merged together in some way so that they form a coherent whole. A version control system helps you do that in an orderly manner. When people work without version control, what tends to happen is this really ugly process where, by hand, they will take all of their files and create a copy and apply a date to it, and they'll store it somewhere but then forget where they put it. And so you just end up with this big mess all over the place. So version control is really necessary if you want to keep a project sanely organized. Finally, an IDE, an Integrated Developer Environment, is basically a program which folds all of these different aspects, or some mix of them, into one program. So for example, the most popular IDE out there is Microsoft Visual Studio. And the most visible part is, of course, the text editor, where you actually do your coding and view files, but Visual Studio allows you, with the push of a button in the same program, to compile your code and then run it, or debug it, if you like. 
Strictly speaking, the IDE doesn't actually contain a compiler. It's using the same compiler you would use from a command line. It's just that the IDE will invoke the compiler for you and do other such conveniences.